Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and in this video I'm going to explain what is a test cross, what we use this for. So here is a simple question today, which of the following crosses is a test cross? And here is an example of different crosses. Imagine that we have two alleles in the gene pool. One would be dominant allele A, another would be recessive allele A. These three alleles may produce in diploid organism three different genotypes. The first one would be homozygous dominant, another one would be heterozygous, and the last one would be homozygous recessive. Imagine now that uh, dominant allele A uh, produce red pigment, so if we would have, for example, plants, uh, these two genotypes would produce one phenotype, uh, plants with red flowers, and this genotype, when we would have two defective alleles, uh, red pigment wouldn't be able to produce, and uh, color of the flowers would be white. White means not a different pigment, it is uh, absence of pigment. So. As you see, this is not a different gene here, the gene is the same gene A, but it is defective and uh, pigment is not produced by this allele. Here pigment is also not produced, but uh, the presence of another normal allele in this set is enough to produce red pigment. Uh, usually when we have one normal allele, expression of this normal allele would be uh, increased in comparison, for example, when we have two normal alleles and uh, this increased ex expression of this normal allele uh, would be enough to produce the same normal color in plants. Because uh, in many plants color is very important. For example, many insects would see yellow and red color better than they would see white color. So plants with uh, red flowers would uh, get better chance for uh, cross-pollination than uh, plants with white flowers. So next step, imagine that you a breeder and you want to find out if uh, red flowers are true breeding or not true breeding. What does it mean? It means if we self-pollinate these uh, flowers uh, in the next generation we would have only red flowers. And of course, uh, as you see, we have here uh, one true breeding genotype that is homozygous dominant. If we uh, self-cross this genotype, for example, capital A, capital A, with another capital A, capital A, 100% uh, of uh, result of this cross would be genotype that is also capital A and capital A. And of course, this homozygous recessive genotype is also true breeding. If we would cross uh, small a, small a genotype with another small a, small a genotype, 100% of the progeny also would be uh, homozygous recessive. So result of this cross would be 100% of the plants with red flowers and result of this cross would be 100% of the plants with white flowers. But this genotype here is not true breeding. Imagine that you have um, plants with red flowers so how would you know if uh, this plant is true breeding or not true breeding? In other words, if it is homozygous uh, dominant in this locus for this um, trait, or uh, in other words, is true breeding, or if uh, it is heterozygous. Uh, in order to find out, we have to do a test cross. We have to cross uh, our plant with known phenotype and genotype, so genotype here is known to uh, recessive alleles and phenotype is known. But here uh, 
Phenotype is known, phenotype is appearance, but genotype is not known. So we have to do a test cross. For example, what would happen if we would cross um, homozygous recessive genotype with homozygous dominant genotype? As you see, uh, if we build a Punnett square, 100% of uh, such a test cross would be heterozygous genotype and 100% result of this test cross would be plants with red flowers. So this parent has white flowers and this parent has red flowers. So 100% of the progeny in F1 generation also would have uh, red flowers. But what would happen if we cross or test cross this homozygous recessive genotype with this heterozygous genotype. So let's do it. And capital A small a here on the side. And when we build the Punnett square, we would see that this trait would segregate in F1 generation. Capital A small a here, capital A small a here small a, small a here, and small a, small a here. So as you see, 50% as a result of such a cross uh, would be plants with red flowers, and 50% as a result of such a cross would be plants with white flowers. So in test cross is one parent of the known phenotype and genotype, we cross with another parent of known phenotype but unknown genotype. And as you see, uh, just looking at the F1 generation, we can say where the uh, plant of unknown genotype is uh, true breeding or not true breeding. So as you see, the correct answer would be answer C. We cross unknown genotype with known genotype. So, uh, the other question could be, why not to self-cross, uh, for example, uh, plants with red flowers, with another plants with red flowers, and if plants would be homozygous dominant, we would see that uh, we would have red flowers, and if we would cross plants that is heterozygous, we would see in the next following generation, segregation of trait but not uh, one to one or 50 to 50 percent but three quarters to one quarter. We can do it if uh, we would for example have a large stock but if we would have small stock for example just 10 or 20 plants imagine that in the following generation if we cross heterozygous genotype is heterozygous genotype we would have only five flowers that is going to be white and 15 that uh, going to have uh, red flowers. But this is not exact numbers. Uh, of course, uh, this is just approximation and variation can be here. And with such a small sample, when we do self-pollination with only 20 plants, we may have in the next generation all the plants that would produce red pigment. Just because we started with a small sample. And in uh, breeding programs, many breeders use a very small sample that they start with. Sometimes only two, three plants or it can be just one animal with unique uh, properties and traits. So, uh, the best way to find out if uh, some locus in homozygous uh, state or if it is heterozygous would be to cross it with known uh, homozygous recessive genotype and uh, if it is heterozygous we would see segregation of trait in the F1 generation. And this is all for today, thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. 
Please write your comments, questions if you have any. And see you in the next video. Goodbye.